Hey guys, and welcome to another CloudPath tutorial. Now, I've made a couple of AWS Lambda videos in the past, and those tutorials have been all based around Node.js, JavaScript. So recently I've been learning a lot about Python and using it at my job, so I thought it'd be a good idea to make a new video showing how to work with AWS Lambda functions in Python using the Python AWS SDK, and just demonstrating how to accomplish a few common tasks. So if that sounds interesting, please stick around and let's do this. All right, guys, so I'm not going to go too far into uh, AWS Lambda history or background or anything like that, since I've covered that in other videos. So if you're interested in a more high level overview of Lambda, please check out one of my other um, Lambda JavaScript videos. All right. Uh, now, the other thing is you may hear me make some references and comparisons to JavaScript since I'm primarily a JavaScript developer who's learning Python. So um, if you hear me make some references to JavaScript, that is why. However, this video is great for anybody who's just interested in learning how to use Lambda with Python, regardless of your uh, background or history. All right. With that, let's get right into it. All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to do is head on over to aws.amazon.com and let's go ahead and sign into the console. All right, so we're going to head on over to the Lambda section and we're going to create our first Lambda in Python. So let's go ahead and select create a function. All right, make sure author from scratch is selected and let's go ahead and name this one Python Hello World. Okay, we'll just look at a simple example first and then we'll, we'll do some more uh, interesting things after that. So let's change the runtime from Node.js to Python 3.7, which is the latest version of Python as of this moment. Um, for choose or create execution role, let's just leave the default selected create a new role with basic Lambda permissions, all right? Which will ba basically give us permissions to read and write to CloudWatch. So let's go ahead and create function. All right, so here's our Python hello world function. And if we just scroll down a little bit uh, to the function code section, we'll see that we've got some boilerplate code here that's just gonna basically print out hello from Lambda. Um, now just to go over a few things here, let me make my screen a little bit bigger. Oh, not that big. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa there. Settle down. Okay, I think that should be good. Um, let's just go over th this function line by line in Python here. So first of all, we have import JSON. Um, which lets us work with JSON and, and do various things. One of the great advantages of the Python language in general is that it comes with uh, a great number of modules right out of the box with the Python standard library. So at the end of the day, you don't have, you don't have the need to use as many different, um, you know, like NPM modules as you would in, say, Node.js, because there's a lot of functionality right out of the box. All right, down to line three, we have our uh, function definition. So we use the keyword def in Python to um, define a function. So we have our function name, we have our uh, event and context, which is a Lambda specific uh, parameters that you may have seen from my Node.js tutorials or you know other work with Lambda. Um, now the one difference here between uh, Python and JavaScript is our function body starts with a colon, okay, and then uses indentation uh, to specify the, basically the, the function block. All right, whereas with JavaScript, you'd see curly braces. So that's one main difference here, one syntactical difference between JavaScript and Lambda. Now, as far as the spacing, um, it doesn't matter whether you use two or four spaces. Uh, from my experience, four is kind of standard with Python, but as long as you're consistent within each function block, then you're gonna be okay. All right, and then lines five through eight is simply your return statement. So we're gonna return a status code and body, which is gonna print out hello from Lambda to the console. So this should look pretty familiar if you're used to JavaScript or basically any other uh, you know, C-style language. Now let's go ahead and run this function and, and just verify that it's working. So if scroll back up to the top and let's go ahead and click on test. All right, we don't really need to do anything here. We're not gonna use any kind of uh, events. We just wanna run this function. So go ahead and click on create. Oh, sorry, we need an event name. So let's just say Python, Python Lambda test event. All right, whatever you wanna name that should be fine. Go ahead and click on create and click on test. Okay, so it's executed the function success. Let's just expand details 
and here we go. So here's our uh, response body as we would expect. Hello from Lambda. All right, so that is our basic uh, Hello World Python Lambda example. And uh, what we're going to do next is write a simple Lambda function to read from our S3 buckets and output a list of all of the S3 buckets in our AWS account. So we'll get a look at um, the Boto3 uh, Python SDK library and how to use that. All right, so the first step here, let's head on over to S3 and just you want to make sure that you've got a couple of two or three S3 buckets set up um, to use in this exercise. So it looks like I've got five of them already. But if you don't have any, just go ahead and create bucket, and it's a pretty simple process. Just enter a uh, name and um, go through the motions here and then click on Create. Okay, it shouldn't take more than a minute or two to set up a few test buckets. And it doesn't matter what's in them or how they're configured or anything like that because we're just going to be looping through basically and reading the names and outputting them. Okay, so once you've done that, head back on over to Lambda, and we're going to create a new Lambda function. So let's click on Create Function. Uh, again, let's leave it author from scratch, and we'll call this one um, list S3 buckets. Okay. Again, make sure this is set to Python 3.7, and we'll leave our execution role set to default, and go ahead and click on create function. All right, so that should give us another basic uh, hello world kind of boilerplate function that we'll modify from here. Okay, so let's scroll down. And um, a lot of times when I'm developing with Lambda, I'll kind of develop the function, the Lambda function outside, you know, in visual code or whatever code editor, and then bring it here. But since these examples are pretty simple, I'm just going to use the inline editor here. All right, so let's just go ahead and delete everything that's in here. We're going to start from scratch. Um, actually, we're still going to need the, the import JSON, so we'll put that back, import JSON. Now, the, uh, the Amazon Python SDK is called Bodo3, okay? And that's available. It's just available for you when you're in your uh, Lambda development environment. So no need to install anything. We can just do import Bodo3, all right? Now, those are all the imports we need, so let's um, skip a line, go down to line 4 here. Um, so let's go ahead and set up our uh, service object that we're going to be interfacing with in this function. So we can do boto3.resource and then specify the resource as the parameter. So that'll be S3. So that'll basically give us an S3 service object that we can then call various methods on and work with uh, within our Lambda function. All right, so let's set up the Lambda function itself. So again, we'll use the def keyword to define a function. And let's say Lambda handler, which is just a convention um, that will pass an event and context. Okay, and then let's do a colon and return to get to the new line. And this looks like it's using uh, three or four space and four space indentation for us by default. So what we're going to do is basically set up an empty. Now I almost said array because in JavaScript this data structure would be an array. But in Python, it's called a list. So let's call this bucket list. And we'll define an empty list. All right, so um, keep in mind that with JavaScript, you'd usually preface this with uh, some kind of variable um, declaration keyword like var, const, or let. In Python, we don't need to do that. We just write the variable name straight away. And we can go ahead and assign a value, which in this case is going to be an empty list. All right. So what we're going to do is create a for loop, um, and we're going to call the S3 service object s3.buckets.all to return us a list of all the buckets. All right, so um, in Python, we can create a for loop like this. So we use a for in structure. So we'll say for bucket in s3.buckets.all. Oops. OK. And then for each inside the for body, now we'll, again, we'll use indentation, so four spaces. Let's just print the bucket dot name, oops, dot name, okay? And then we'll add that name to the array, okay? We're just printing it here just kind of to see what our output's going to look like. Uh, but the important thing is here to add it to the actual bucket list. I said array, <laughs> the bucket list list, okay? 
you know, I'm sure I'll still be in uh, the JavaScript mindset for a while until I train my brain to think more in Python. So we can use append to add an item to a list, whereas with JavaScript we, you know, use dot .push to push an item into an array. So it's very similar um, in structure, just the syntax and naming conventions are a little bit different here and there with Python, but in a lot of ways it's very similar to JavaScript, so it's, um, you know, not too hard, difficult to pick up if you've got that background. Okay, so that is it. We're looping through our buckets and uh, printing, it, printing each one out and also adding each bucket name to our bucket list list. All right, so now we just have to return that. Okay, and we'll use similar, a similar return statement as we had before in our hello world where we'll first return a status code of 200. So status 200, that should be status code, comma, and then we'll, um, we'll return the bucket list in the body. Okay, so body colon bucket list. All right, and we are done authoring our function, so now we can go ahead and test it. Let's click on Save. Let's scroll back up to the top and just set up our test event here. Um, so this could be anything, you know, let's just say uh, list, oh, list S3 test event. All right, and let's go ahead and save that. Click Create, and let's go ahead and run it. Oh, execution failed. Let's see what's going on here. Um, error in module lambda function invalid syntax. All right, got something wrong here. You guys, I'm sure, probably saw it as I was writing it. Lambda handler event context. What doesn't it like here? I don't know. That looks okay to me. Um, let me go back up to the error here. Syntax error in module lambda function invalid syntax line 8. I should have looked at that first. Line 8, what do we have here? For bucket in S3 buckets.all. Ah, oh, okay. I'm missing my colon here. So again, you guys probably noticed this as I was writing it, but, you know, whereas with JavaScript, we'd, um, we'd use curly brackets for a for statement body. In Python, we've got to use a colon similarly to how we uh, designate our our function body. All right, so uh, sorry about that. Let me save that and let's try it again. Go ahead and run test. Okay, we've got another error. It looks like access denied. Okay, so what's happening here is our Lambda does not have permissions to talk to S3, basically. So let us um, quickly go over to IAM and give our Lambda execution role permissions. So I'm going to go to the top menu and let's type in IAM. And let's see if we can find that role that we've just created for our Lambda function. I've got to make my font a little bit smaller here so I can see this. Lambda S3 role. All right, so this is the one that um, Lambda has created for us implicitly. So let's click on that. And, of course, in a real-world scenario, we may want to I don't know, we may do this a little bit differently, but I'm just going to heavily handed give it, uh, you know, cart blank access to S3. So let's search for S3. And I'm going to give it Amazon S3 full access. All right. Again, we may um, restrict the access a little bit more surgically in, in a production scenario, but I'm just going to go ahead and quickly do this for demo purposes. All right, so now our Lambda should have full access to S3. Let's go back and test that theory. Back over to Lambda, back to list S3 buckets, and let's run our test again. Ah, failed again. What is going on here? All right, <laughs> access denied. Hmm. Da, da, da. That should have worked. I don't know why. Check, make sure that we're using the right execution role. Service role list, S3 buckets, that looks correct. Let's go back over to IAM and make sure that our change took. Roles. Uh, 
Oh, did I add it to the wrong one? Looks like I did. That must be an old role that I set up for another demo. Sorry about that, guys, but I'm just going to basically have to do the same thing again. S3, full axis, attach policy. <laughs> All right. So sorry about that little diversion there. Let's go back to Lambda and try it. Third time's a charm, I think, don't you? All right, list us three buckets and test. There we go, that looks much better. All right, and there is our list of S3 buckets, just as we would expect. So yeah, just uh, remember that you've got to give your Lambda correct permissions to access, uh, you know, really any AWS resource that it's going to be talking to. So. All right, that is basically how to output a list of S3 buckets using a Python Lambda. And uh, what we're going to do next is do some work with DynamoDB. So we're going to create a table and uh, write, uh, basically write some Lambda functions to read and write to that table. All right, so from the top menu, let's go ahead and head on over to DynamoDB. And if you don't see it right here, immediately to the left, you can just type it in this search bar. So what we're going to do is set up a test table uh, just so we have some data to work with for our Lambda functions. So let's go ahead and click on Create Table. All right, table name. Let's say um, this is going to be the Planets table. Whoops, didn't mean for that to be in all caps. Planets. All right, uh, so for the partition ID, let's just say ID. Leave it as string. And let's go ahead and click on Create. All right, I don't know if my screen is, or my font's a little bit too big here. Let's see. There, there we go. All right, so it'll just take a minute or two for your table to be provisioned. There we go. And what we're going to do now is just add some items. So if you click on the Items tab and then click on Create Item, we should be able to manually enter in an item. All right, so let's just add some planets. Uh, let's start with Mercury. Okay. And I want to add uh, at least another property here. So I'm going to, from this plus uh, little icon here, let's choose append and let's choose string. So let's add a temp field. All right, we're going to add the temperature. So this uh, Mercury is one of the hottest, I think, if not the hottest planets. So let's say sizzling hot. All right, and click save. Actually, I think Venus may be hotter on the surface, but... Uh, <laughs> Just some side trivia there. Uh, let's add a few more items. Okay, I'm not going to change that. Let's say Venus. Okay, add a property, string. All right, let's just say very hot, or let's say extremely hot. Save, create item. All right, let's add one for Earth. Okay. And property, temp, and let's say warm. All right, save that. And let's add one more. Let's do Mars. And I've never been to Mars, but from what I hear, it's kind of cold there. So let's say cold. I think the high temperature there is like uh, 72 Fahrenheit, so, um, and much colder at night. So let's save that. And there we go. So we've got a couple of entries in our database to work with. All right, so that's all we need to do here for now. Let's head back over to Lambda. All right, so I'm back over here at Lambda, and I'm going to create a new function. So again, same settings as before. Let's just call this one get item. Okay, set it to Python 3.7. Um, defaults for execution role. And uh, now you know from the past exercise that we're going to have to give this thing uh, permissions to talk to DynamoDB. So we'll do that shortly. Let's go ahead and create the function. We'll set up the function first, then we'll go back to IAM and give it the correct permissions. All right, so once that is created, let's scroll down to our code editor. And I'm going to make this font a little bit bigger here. All right, so uh, this time I'm going to delete everything except for import JSON, because we'll need that too. So let's import our SDK. Import Bodo3. Bodo, that, that's a really great name. I love that. <laughs> so, okay, similar to what we did before with our S3 exercise, we're going to create a service object 
This time it's going to be for DynamoDB. So let's do DynamoDB equals um, Bodo3.resource, and then we'll pass in DynamoDB. So pretty much identical to what we did before, just using a different service object this time. Um, now, uh, another thing we'll have to do is create a basically a variable to hold our table, the table in question, the table that we'll be using, which is the planets table. So let's set a variable called table equals dynamodb dot table. So then we can pass in a string value representing the table name. So we called our table planets. So just pass in planets, and that should give us a good reference to our planets table. All right, let's set up our function. So def lambda handler, and this part will be, again, identical to what we did before. Um, we'll pass in an event in context, even though we're not really going to be using it in our function. And colon, enter. OK, now we're ready to start writing our function body. So we're basically going to set up a response object that represents um, the item that we're retrieving from the table, so the, the specific planet that we want to retrieve. So we'll set that up right away in our response object, and then we'll just return that in our return statement. All right, so let's do response equals. Now here we can use our table instance, table.getItem. And oops, that should be get underscore lowercase item. And this is just, you know, the convention followed by the, the Bodo3 Dynamo library. Um, and you can look up all of the function names and everything that's available. So table.getItem will allow us to pass in an object to retrieve from that table. All right, so within this function, um, we'll specify the item that we want to retrieve by key. So let's do a key equals. And this is, um, again, here's another comparison with JavaScript, where this would look like a sort of object syntax in JavaScript. And in Python, it's called a dictionary, where you have a key value, uh, key value pair like this. So id equals, and let's retrieve uh, mercury. So we'll set the string value to mercury. OK, and that should retrieve that item for us. So let's just make sure that we've got the, the correct item. We'll print the response, just like that. And then we'll add a return statement. So return um, curly braces. Return a status code equal to 200 again. And the body will just be our response object, or I should say dictionary. All right. I think that looks good. So let's go ahead and save that. All right. Now, what I want to do is probably open up IAM in a new window this time, so I don't have to go back and forth too much. All right, let's go to roles, and this time we're looking for our um, get item execution role. I think I see it, but I just want to make sure so I don't make another mistake and uh, add the permissions to the wrong role. Yep, that looks like it. So let's go ahead and click on get item attach policies. This time we're looking for DynamoDB. So just type in Dynamo. It helps if you spell it correctly. Dynamo. And let's just give it the full access policy, attach policy. All right, so we should be all set up to go ahead and run our function. So I'm going to switch back over to my Lambda open tab. And let's make this a little bit bigger again. All right, so let's set up our test event. Uh, I'm going to say get item test event. Event. There we go. Create. All right, now let's run this guy. All right, looks good so far. Expand, details, and here we go. So here's our Mercury item. Remember, we uh, here now here's the reason we added the temp, just so we could see this and verify that we're actually getting the right thing. So we had uh, the temperature set to sizzling hot, because it's very hot on Mercury. And that all looks good. All right, so uh, very simple thing here. We just use the Bodo3 library to um, to be able to work with DynamoDB. In this case, we're getting an item. I think we'll do one more example where we actually set an item, so we'll add a new item to the table. 
All right, so let's go back to Lambda, and we're going to create a new function. Let's do create function, and um, since we had get item before, let's do, we can do add item, or we can do put item. It's a little more technical. Uh, let's say put item. There we go. And set this to Python 3.7. Again, we'll use our default our defaults with the uh, execution role, so it'll create a put item execution role for us. And we'll go ahead and create that function. So this one's going to look very similar to our previous function, except we're just going to be using the put item method except for get item. In fact, we can probably copy the previous function to save a little bit of time. Okay. Well, all right, let's just, um, we'll just go ahead and write it again. So again, we're going to import photo three. Okay, we'll set up our service object, DynamoDB. I just didn't want to switch back and forth again, you know, switch tabs and, and go back to the old function. It's not too much to rewrite it. Boto three dot, and it's good practice. <laughs> And again, we'll pass in DynamoDB as our resource. Okay, we'll set up our table reference. DynamoDB.table, capital T. And we'll pass in planets. All right. So we've got our, uh, our Lambda function. We'll, we're just using the boilerplate setup here. All right, so we're going to do table dot, this time, put item. Put underscore item, all lowercase. Okay, and parentheses inside here we'll uh, pass an item. This is going to be the new item that we're adding to the table. So let's add a new planet. Let's say ID. Um, well, we'll skip uh, Jupiter and Saturn and let's add Neptune just for fun. Neptune. Now, what is the temperature on Neptune? I'm not sure exactly, but I know it's pretty darn cold. So Let's say super cold on Neptune. There we go. Okay, and our return statement is almost done. All we have to do is change this JSON message to um, let's just uh, actually just let, write a string message. We'll say item added. Okay, and then just to verify that it actually worked, we'll go back to DynamoDB, check the table, and make sure our new entry is there. All right, so far so good. Let's go ahead and save this code. And let's go back over to IAM. So I'm just going to switch to that tab that I still have open. Select roles. And let's look. We're looking for our put item lambda execution role. Ah, smaller. Okay. Where is it? Item. I don't see the put item role. What the heck? Do I need to refresh this? Yeah, <laughs> there it is now. So yeah, if you don't see it right away, um, just learn from my experience there. Just click refresh if you don't see it, and it should pop right up. Yeah, that's because I still have the tab open. I didn't refresh. All right, so attach policies. Um, again, we're looking for DynamoDB. We're going to give it full access just for demo purposes, so attach policy. And we should be good. So let's go back over to Lambda. Um, again, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay, let's scroll back up to the top. Let's add our test event. So we'll call this one put item test event. All right, and no further changes. Oh, it didn't like here. Uh, that should be fine. I click on create. All right, and let's go ahead and click on test again to run our function. Uh-oh. Something didn't like lambda function. EOL while scanning literal string literal line 16. Let's see what's going on here. Body item added. All right, so I'm thinking the problem might be that I'm returning a string as the body instead of an object. So um, let's just try to set up a response object here that contains that message. So we'll do something like message, we'll set that equal to item added. 
let's see if it likes this better. So instead of that string literal, I'll just add that response object. Let's see if this works. So save that. I think that would make sense. It should be an object. All right, let's try to rerun our function. Yeah, they like that much better. All right, cool. Mystery solved. So uh, let's head on over and just verify that our object has been created in the table. So I'm going to go over to my other tab here, and I'm going to click on DynamoDB. Let's go back to our planets table. Planets. And we should get a list of items if we click on the items tab. There we go. And there's our Neptune super cold. So our Lambda has effectively added this item to the table. All right, guys. So um, that wraps up this tutorial on AWS with Python. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is just an intro, you know, to get your feet wet in writing Lambda functions using Python. And maybe I'll do some more kind of complex work with Python in the future, in future tutorials. So thanks, guys, for watching. And um, hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video and my other videos, other content, content on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.